The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Jay Stowe here with realagriculture.com and we're here for another episode of the Canola School and I'm joined again by Autumn Barnes of the Canola Council of Canada and today we're talking seeding into dry conditions. It has been terribly dry here in southern Alberta. So what do we need to know about seeding in dry conditions? Yeah, so I'd say the, the number one question that we, we puzzle over every time it's, it's dry in the south, which for the past few years has been more often than not, um, is whether or not to chase moisture. And I'd say that one really, really depends. I mean, right now it's April 25th. I know a lot of growers are already getting into their canola or getting through their canola. Um, and when it comes down to it, you know, if, you're, if you have to chase moisture down to an inch and a half or two inches, you're really putting a lot of pressure on those little seedlings. They've got a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of ground to cover, I guess, to come up out of the ground and actually emerge. So, so pushing depth is something that you really want to do with caution. Uh, when you set your drill to an inch and a half, are all of the seeds coming out in an inch and a half? Um, or are you going to have some issues with some of them going two inches or further? So really, I would, I would caution growers um, about, uh, about chasing moisture. On the other hand, you know, if it's getting into mid-May and our soils are really warm, we're down here in southern Alberta, our soils are pretty warm. I mean, if we get a shot of moisture, um, maybe, maybe it is okay to push to an inch and a quarter or maybe a little bit more. But again, you really want to make sure you're actually hitting that depth and not going further because that, that is a common thing when we chase moisture is to end up a little deeper. Um, placement in general, I think, has been a little bit tricky for growers this year, especially if you're in some... Um, some heavier soils or some harder pack if it's super super dry i know there's been issues with um you know opers or cedars just not going into the ground quite properly um so so that's that's a consideration as well and i'd say you know as we're seeding in these dry conditions we really want to make sure that we're checking placement uh frequently to make sure that the seed is going where where you want and that you're getting good seed and, and fertilizer separation so um, in regards to, to fertilizer, that's another one where, where um, you know, in dry years, we get a lot of questions about if growers should be backing off on fertilizer. And um, I guess the, the good thing, if we can say that about the past three dry years, depending on where you've been in southern Alberta, is that um, if you didn't really get much of a crop off last year, uh, your fertilizer is probably still sitting there. So I know there was a lot of spring soil testing going on um, to see just how much was was left over in the soil. So, so certainly we could be seeding into conditions this spring that we've got adequate uh, adequate fertilizer in the soil. And and um, regardless, I think we really want to be careful about our seed placed foss. So no more than 20 pounds. Um, of, of FOSS, uh, especially, you know, when it's been so dry down here. And, and another thing which uh, I think, I know in seeding it's really busy, but something I'd like to see growers do a little bit more is to turn off their FOSS, um, you know, for 100 feet or 150 feet and, and mark that spot or make a mental note of where it is, someplace you'll be able to come back and find it and go and compare emergence between that spot where you turned off your seed place FOSS or your seed placed fertilizer, uh, if you've got a blend in there, and then compare it to the rest of the field and see if you are having any uh, negative emergence impacts from your seed placed fertilizer. Because I think that is, you know, we're, we're averaging around 50% emergence across the prairies for commercial canola. Um, and, and I think that seed place fertilizer probably is responsible for some of that loss. So anything else we need to know? Yeah, so, so another question is, um, when should I seed? Um, and I think that growers are down here are certainly taking heed of just seeding regardless and not waiting for moisture. And I think that that's something that we really need to uh, to consider. It's, it's May 20, or gosh, it's April 25th right now. A lot of growers in southern Alberta are going on canola or starting on canola. Um, but for the rest of the prairies, you know, if, if you're dry, waiting for moisture is probably not the best thing to do. And once it starts raining, I mean, we can always cross our fingers that it just is going to rain for a while. And it's better to have that seed in the ground um, and, and wait for moisture than, than to try and wait until the ground is moist and then try and get in and seed and potentially cause some issues later on as well. In the past, uh, in the past couple of weeks, it's been pretty windy in southern Alberta and, and across in Saskatchewan as well. 
Um, and so that, that does quite a bit for drying out soil. And I know we've had some discussions internally about, you know, if you can wait for it to not be a windy day to seed, I think that's a bit of a tricky order, especially in my territory in Southern Alberta, where it seems like it's just been windy for a long time. Um, but, uh, but certainly we've been seeing a lot more, a lot more drying out. And, um, and uh, if there is something you can do, I guess, to, to change your seeding practice or to try and get a bit better placement, um, you could always uh, you could always try and play with packing pressure a little bit if that's something that you can adjust with some ease. Um, maybe maybe use a little bit more packing pressure on your lighter soils to try and um, you know utilize that moisture in the soil better. Um, but again, this is something we just kind of have to have to manage and really just cross our fingers and hope for rain. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs>